Hello and welcome to Apex TV. I'm Paul, this is my buddy Matt, and today we're talking about street bike chain adjustments. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, it's not as simple as you might think, so stay tuned. All right, chain maintenance is something that's done quite differently depending on your motorcycle. So it is important to consult your owner's manual before conducting any chain service on your bike. Mechanical errors can cause premature wear and failure in some cases. So it's important to do things according to spec. All right, let's jump right into it. Now, first step is obviously deciding when you should lube your chain. This is something a lot of people don't know and don't do properly, in some cases even miss. Uh, so Matt, just highlight to everybody uh, how to identify when you should service your chain. So we recommend a service interval between 500 and 1,000 kilometers, especially on a new motorcycle where the chain components are still breaking in. Um, some common identifiers that your chain needs service is the chain will be sagging, there'll be excessive noise while you're riding, and you might even get a decel slap when you let off your throttle. All right, now that we've identified that your bike actually needs a chain service, uh, this is actually a great example because uh, it's a bike that's just come in for its first service. You can see the chain is a little bit, uh, a little bit saggy as well. It's a little bit dry. Um, how should we tackle this project? What's the, what's the first step you should take? So now you've taken your bike for a, a good ride and it's nice and warm. Um, the first step would be sourcing a good O-ring safe chain cleaner. And then you're gonna rotate the wheel and spray the entire length of the chain with the cleaner. Once you've completed that step, you're ready to use your chain brush. So you thread this on and you basically just rotate the chain back and forth until you've completely gone around the entire length of the chain. And then you can finish it off by cleaning the debris off with a, a shop towel or a rag. Right, now I think a lot of people too don't actually have a brush. Uh, what's the reason for, for using a brush over just a, a regular rag? So these plates and pins and o-rings can actually build up with a lot of contaminants, um, such as sand and just other road debris. So the bristles on the brush will actually get in between those pins and rollers and plates and then loosen up a lot of that debris so you can clean it properly with your egg. All right, now we talked about cleaning your chain. Now the next step is lubing it. Uh, Matt, just what are some pro tips on, on how to tackle lubing your chain? So on street bikes especially, you wanna make sure you're not spraying your chain lube towards the rear tire or the rear brake system at all to prevent any contamination. Um, as well as you want to spray chain lube on the bottom side of the chain. This will allow the centrifugal force of the rear wheel spinning to actually force the lube through the chain, rather than if you just sprayed it on top, it's just going to fling off a lot faster than it would uh, if you sprayed it through the bottom. And I think that's a very valid point because I know for myself, uh, I used to ride a lot of off-road. I would always just go to the back of the sprocket at the, and, and spray it on the outside of the chain. And I wasn't even thinking about the fact that it, it just flings off as soon as you start to ride. Uh, so definitely if you want a better lubrication and long-lasting lubrication, spray it on the inside. That centrifugal force will drive it through the chain um, and give you a better result. All right, so we've got a clean uh, lubricated chain. Now the next part of, of adjusting the chain is finding what the tight spot is. Now I think this is something that a lot of people don't realize actually exists or even know uh, about. Uh, and now Matt, just highlight a little bit why it is important to adjust the chain according to the tight spot. So every time you go to adjust your chain, it's very important that you actually adjust the chain at the tight spot. Um, if you do not do this, you can actually cause chain failure and some excessive stress on your transmission bearings and seals. Um, how you do this, I found the easiest way is to hold a ruler here and then rotate the wheel slowly until you find the tightest spot of the chain. Right, and I mean, that's a very valid point because the, the tight spot in the chain is the tightest point at which the adjustment is made. So if you adjust it uh, according to, the, let's say, the loose point uh, in the chain, that means it's only gonna get tighter from that point and you're gonna be well out of the manufacturer's spec as according to what the adjustment should be. Uh, that's why it's so important to find the tight spot. Um, now, in this bike, we found the tight spot. We know where it is. It's sitting right uh, where this wheel's adjusted. Um, now, how do you go about actually making the adjustment uh, to get the chain in the right spot? So yeah, it's gonna be different bike to bike, so you need to consult your owner's manual for your actual chain tension and where they want you to measure the chain. Um, but after you've figured that out, the first step would be to loosen your axle nut, and then you can loosen off these pinch nuts and then back these axle adjusters back, and that's gonna force the wheel back and tighten up your chain. So once you have the proper chain tension, um, you need to pay attention to these hash marks on the swing arm and the axle blocks and make sure they're square, square from side to side. 
All right, so you've got the wheel square, you got the tension the where it should be. What sort of steps should you take to make sure that everything goes back together uh, the way it should be? So one thing we run into quite a bit when people do their own chain adjustments is the axle is tightened up and the blocks aren't actually touching these bolts. And that can be a safety concern. So one of the tricks that we do is you find a rag and you actually put it between the sprocket and the chain and turn the wheel backwards. This will force the axle forwards and you will have no gaps. So then once that's achieved, you can actually tighten your axle nut to spec. All right, so we got the, the, the back wheel back together. Everything's torqued. Uh, it looks good. Um, any final touches that you should do um, before, uh, you know, saying that you've chained services complete? Um, just basically go through your owner's manual and refer to your torque specs. Um, double check that you've torqued everything properly and that everything looks good. If everything looks good, you're ready to ride. Okay, now we've talked about uh, conventional swing arm chain adjustments. Now there isn't a whole lot of differences between conventional and single sided, uh, but we thought we should talk a little bit about a single sided swing arm just to have a, a complete uh, talk about it. Now, um, when it comes to actually finding the tight spot, it's done exactly the same way on both models. Uh, just look at your owner's manual to find whatever that spec is. Uh, now in this particular case, uh, when it comes to actually making the adjustment, how do you do so on a single sided swing arm? So on a single side swing arm, the rear sprocket is located on an eccentric hub. And what that means is basically there's an adjustment nut back here um, that you adjust with a wrench available from your dealership or using your owner's manual. Um, so when that nut is turned, the rear sprocket will either move forward or back, loosening or tightening your chain. So it's much easier adjustment. Um, all you have to do is loosen one pinch bolt and then turn this nut. No axle nuts or axle adjusters to mess with. All right, and there's, there's come two really nice things there. One is the fact that you don't have to worry about the alignment of the rear wheel. Um, it always is square to the bike, uh, so that makes it a little more uh, e ease of use. Uh, now the other thing is when it comes to the actual tool, it is something that's very, it's nice to use the actual proper wrench. There is people that use punches and hammers to do it, which is a bit of a crude way of doing it. And you do end up marring up uh, the nut for the eccentric to do the adjustment. And it's just not a clean way of doing things. So definitely uh, the wrenches aren't very expensive. Uh, definitely something worth getting um, to make sure you're looking after your motorcycle the way it should be. Um, now, those are the differences between the two. There is one other element that most owner's manuals will highlight. Um, and that's whether you have the bike on the center stand or a side stand when it comes to actually making the adjustment itself and measuring the tension. Um, this bike is done as it sits on a center stand. The Tenere is one that's on the side. So what's the difference in, in, in measuring that? Is there something you need to watch out for when you're, when you're doing adjustments on the side stand versus on a center stand? It's a very similar process. You just need to make sure that you're maintaining the tight spot. Um, whether you need to mark that tight spot or not. But other than that, it's just a manufacturer spec. It's the way they take it at the manufacturer to find the proper chain tension. So the process is very similar and there's no real big differences. Okay, so now that you know uh, how to service your chain in most cases, um, let's talk a little bit about when to know when to replace your chain and sprockets. Um, now this is a kind of a good example that we've taken off the bike the other day. Uh, we have a brand new uh, piece of chain that uh, would come out of the box as well as a chain that's actually due for or while well, was taken off because it needed to be replaced. Um, let's just highlight what was wrong with it, what we see that you know, causes it to be uh, due for replacement. So this chain in particular has a few things wrong with it. Um, there wasn't much adjustment left. It came off a multi shotter with an eccentric hub and there wasn't much adjustment left on the eccentric so we either needed to replace the chain or put in an extra master link which we highly do not recommend. On this chain, the links are very uh, loose and you could actually pull the chain right off the rear sprocket when the chain was at proper tension. Um, there's also a few uh, frozen links inside this chain. Um, what that means is basically the links inside have seized, ran out of lube, and they no longer move. So this chain was definitely due for replacement and if your chain is anything like this, we highly recommend you replacing it instead of just cleaning and moving it. Right, and I think it's important that while you're servicing your chain, it's a day, you know, it's a routine um, that you check for, you know, frozen links and, and stretched links, and also kind of measure off the rear sprocket how much it's actually stretched out, that sort of thing. So uh, that's with regards to the the chain sprockets. When do you know sprockets are worn out? 
So usually we highly recommend to replace the chain and sprockets in the set as they do wear together. If you replace one and not the other, it's going to cause exaggerated wear on your new component as well as your used component. Um, so one common sign of sprockets is the actual teeth will get very hooked. If that happens, the sprocket's very close to actually spinning and you will no longer have any driving force on that sprocket. Right, and that can be very dangerous in a lot of cases too if you let it get that far. So uh, some very important stuff. Um, that's all we have for today. If you have any other uh, questions or comments, by all means leave them uh, in the comment section below. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, if you have a chance and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. A great first step, of course, is always important. Yeah. Is this even a sentence? We're just gonna go over what the basics are as far as, no. Oh, I'm just trying to get through this so I can just listen to you talk the rest of the <laughs> As well as the chain slap on D-cell can be a sign of a very loose chain. And, uh... <laughs> I always have to warm my hands before I do anything. <laughs> Okay. We generally recommend a service interval of 500 to 1,000 kilometers. And some common uh, uh, excessive slap on D-cell or noise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I mean, that's something uh, I have nothing to say to. You did it masterfully, good job. <laughs>